Hi everyone and welcome back to our course on Google Calendar. In this lesson, we're going to look at settings to make Google Calendar work for you, keeping you in the loop and maybe even cutting out a few emails from your life. First, let's navigate our way over to the web-based version of Google Calendar, taking note that the app on a mobile device will have a different interface. Once you are here, you will notice a few settings that we will have along the left and along the top right. Beginning with the top right, there are two icons to help switch between Google Calendar and Google Tasks. To the left, you have view options such as viewing your calendar by day, week, month, year, schedule, etc. While here, notice the letters written with each view. These indicate a keyboard shortcut for switching between these views. Simply click that letter on your keyboard to switch to the different views corresponding to that letter. Next to the left of view options is the Google settings gear, support, and then search. Along the left side of the screen, you have create, and below that is a small calendar in month view. Below that, you can search for people in your domain, which will reveal their calendar to help you determine if they are available or busy. Below that, you have your insights and then your personal calendars, followed by other calendars. Other calendars are those that you have added or have been invited to access. Back to the top right, clicking on the settings gear, the options are settings, trash, density and color, parent, and an option to get add-ons. Speaking of add-ons, you can select options or add more from the side panel. Going into the calendar settings, notice the menu of options down the left side of the screen for quick access, or you can scroll down the center of the screen. One important note here is that there is no save button as you make adjustments to these settings. So any changes that you make are automatic and you can use the back arrow beside of settings in the top left corner to get back to your calendar. Scrolling down these general settings, you can adjust your time zone or allow it to be adjusted based on your current location. If you are frequently scheduling meetings with others outside of your time zone, select Show World Clock. Next is default event settings when creating a new event. Both 30 minutes and 60 minutes are the standard, but pick what works best for your line of work. You can select as low as 15 minutes or as much as 120 minutes. This is just the default and you can manually adjust as you create events. You may decide to turn on speedy meetings, which will end your 30 minute meetings five minutes early and your longer meetings 10 minutes early. This allows for transitions between events and thus protecting and respecting each other's time. Additional defaults here include your default guest permissions and when to add invitations to your calendar. Notification settings. Don't overlook these. These help you remain on time and aware of upcoming events, especially when you're busy. So here's a pro tip. Turn on desktop notifications and then get your Google Calendar app on your phone or mobile device, such as an iPad, and turn on the push notifications for calendar events. Now, if you're working on your computer, you'll get an alert about an upcoming event. If you're away from your computer with your phone or your iPad, you'll get the push notification about the upcoming event. Next is view options, so set these for your personal preference. Following this is events from Gmail. You may have noticed suggestions in Gmail to add a calendar event, so turn this on to further help your Google tools help you save time. Now we've made it down to working hours and locations. If you are working in an environment with others, it is important to set your working hours and locations because it informs others when you're available. This helps prevent unnecessary emails back and forth. Imagine the time and emails that can be saved with this. So spend time setting this up. Right below this section is keyboard shortcuts, which are useful. So you may want to enable that here. Scrolling down, you have offline access along with appointment schedules. There is more in here, but skip down to your main calendar, probably labeled as the name on your Google account. 
When working with others, it's important to set up your access permissions for events and share your calendar with specific people or groups. If you have a business or school account, you are within your own Google domain, meaning all users are under that at xyzcompany.com or it could be at xyzuniversity.edu. As with sharing Google Drive files, you can share your calendar either within your domain or outside of your domain to the public. So for example, depending on your line of work and level of collaboration or communication with others, you may wish to turn on the option to make your calendar events available to your domain. Notice here it will say that the school or company domain that you are under. You can then allow to show free slash busy for your events, or you can select all event details. Along with this is specific people or groups. You may want to give a manager or a boss access to see all details. Maybe you want to give your team or another department access to see free busy or full details. This is the section you specify people or groups as opposed to the whole domain. Remember, this significantly saves time in emails, so set this up to work best for you and those you work with. You do still have the ability on individual events to mark them as private, so you can still hide personal events and notes like doctor appointments for those that you have given all details access. Speaking of emails, make sure to check out the other notifications section so that you can set when to receive email notifications. You may want to turn off event responses or turn off daily agenda. If you're not a subscriber, click down below to subscribe so you get notified about similar videos we upload. To see the full course that this video came from, click over there. And click over there to see more videos from Simon Says It.